Good evening. Happy Hanukkah. Okay, let's try that again. Happy Hanukkah, everybody. Okay, that sounds a little bit better. So welcome to Hanukkah in Parsippany. A big thank you goes to the town of Parsippany for once again hosting the Hanukkah menorah lighting. And it's a great pleasure for me to welcome to, God willing, his first of many Hanukkah menorah lightings, our new mayor, Michael Soriano. And I'd like to also thank Jack Weinstein from the mayor's office for all his help in the back over there, who made tonight, made this evening happen. I'd like to ask the mayor to come and give us a few words of Hanukkah greeting. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, first of all, I, um, I, would, I would like to begin acknowledging some people here in the room. We've already uh, met Rabbi B Baumengarten. R Rabbi, thank you very much for everything. And, um, uh, we also are, are joined by Rabbi Hershon, who I just got to met tonight for the first time. Rabbi, thank you so much. Okay, and uh, Rabbi Lubin, where are you? Shalom, shalom. Okay. Uh, uh, Rabbi Rudin, Moisha, where are you? Okay, there you go. Okay. And uh, our newest rabbi here in town, you can tell he still has that fresh rabbi smell. <laughs> rabbi Sklars, where are you? There you go, Rabbi. Um, we wanted to make sure that this was uh, a chance for the township of Parsippany to say that our Jewish community, we, I, I never liked when people said, oh, uh, tolerate, tolerance or acceptance. I'd rather say loved. It's loved here in this township and supported, as are everyone in this township. And I, I would say that this is very... Uh, uh, a, a very mixed and ecumenical and culturally diverse group here today. Um, I would like to thank uh, some of the uh, heads of some of the other uh, uh, congregations that we have here in town. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Iman Adel El Morosi, where are you? Iman, thank you very so much for, for being here. Uh, Father David from the St. Anne's Church. Reverend Bragg, how are you? Did I miss anyone? Did I have oh, oh my goodness, I'm please, sorry, I'm sorry, please, please stand. Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. Stacy Church, pastor of First Baptist Community Church. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend, thank you so much. I hate when I get caught off guard on those, I'm sorry about that, Reverend. Um, also, uh, I would like to acknowledge, uh, um, well, you know, even though people can be on opposite side of the aisle, I'm, I'm a Democrat, this gentleman's a Republican, he's the longest serving Republican in the township of Parsippany, and sometimes he kind of is like my rabbi, okay? Uh, Councilman Michael DiPiero. Councilman. Uh, also with us, um, they're not just council persons, they're my friends also. Uh, uh, council member, uh, well, actually, we'll start with Council Member Peterson. Hello, Council Member. And Council Vice President Janice McCarthy. Okay, so uh, thank you, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, I, I would also like you to uh, acknowledge the presence of our Chief of Police, Chief Andrew Miller. Uh, and our brand new uh, business administrator in the township of, uh, of, of Parsippany. Uh, mayor, oh, well, he's a mayor in his uh, town, by the way. But uh, but he, I will say him as mayor. My ego is strong enough to do that. I'm okay. okay? <laughs> mayor Keith Kasmar. Yes, <laughs> uh, I would like to also thank the ambulance squad for being here as well, keeping us nice and safe. Okay, 66. Thank you so much. As well as other members of the Parsippany Troy Hills Police Department. Thank you so much for being here, Sergeant Captain. Thank you. 
I grew up in a neighborhood where menorahs were just as common as Christmas trees. As a, as a raised Catholic boy who uh, calls himself a Methodist sometimes, this is normal for me. This is natural. This is family for me. And uh, this is something that I love seeing that I'm used to seeing around my holiday celebration as well. So as I understand it, it's, it's more than just the eight nights that the one supply, one night supply of oil was able to survive. To, to have the menorah, but it is to show a light to the world. And that is why we put it in windows. That's why we have it there on the edge of town hall facing the street so that everyone can see that the light that we have because we want to be that candle in the darkness. Okay, So that's something I want everyone here in Parsippany to recognize and I want something I want the outside world to see, that we will be that candle in the darkness, that candle of love, that candle where our community that is culturally diverse, can get along, and also learn to progress and go places together. So I want to thank all of you so much for being here. And let's get on with the celebration. Thank you. I'd like to call upon Rabbi Asher Hurston, the regional director of the Chabad Center of Northwest New Jersey, who inaugurated the menorah lighting here in Parsippany 32 years ago, and hasn't missed a year. And uh, without further ado, Rabbi Hirsch. Thank you, thank you all for coming. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. There's an adage which is very precious, and it states, that a person has to listen very intently to the story that the Hanukkah flames tell. And it's true, as the mayor alluded to. It alludes to a history, an overcoming of repression, a incredible event that happened 2,200 years ago, an open miracle, but also has a direct instruction for each and every one of us. And just to mention one of those aspects, but a key one. You see, when we look at a burning candle, one does not have to have great imagination to understand that it represents each and every one of us. A biblical verse states, a candle of God is the soul of man. Every individual who is created, each and every one of us, has a divine soul that was sent down to this world for a mission and a purpose. And each individual's mission and purpose complements the other. We are one family. We are one integrated entity, and all with a divine plan of making this world into a godly place, to illuminate the world. And this is much of the empowerment and, part, and much of the story, but the instruction as far as taking it and the takeaway of the holiday, to understand the power that each individual has and must be able to bring to fruition and as far as illuminating this physical world. But the menorah tells us an additional lesson. That not only are we here to illuminate the world, but it tells us how to bring light to this world. You see, many people get deterred when it comes to, it could be religious observance, it could be social responsibilities, it could be commitments to another, where they say, you know something, it's too much. Our Torah, the Bible tells us, it's never all or nothing. Life is a growing process. The key is if we're growing each day. And therefore, we start the Hanukkah with one candle. If you feel that it's too much to do whatever laudable thing you're considering doing, do a little bit of it. Whether it be kosher, whether it be charity, whether it be honoring your father and your mother, if a person finds that there's a dictate that's too much, it's not all or nothing, never is. Do a little. And that little will carry so much weight, it's something that's revolutionary. But on the other hand, that little must never remain the ceiling. What's good enough for the first night is not good enough for the second night. Tonight we're going to light one candle and everybody will give an applause, and rightfully so. If somebody came tomorrow night and did a repeat, everyone said, wait, one candle, you don't do half the job, Robert. What are you doing? Have you been drinking? What's going on? And... A person would say, wait a minute, last night you said I did a great job. 
Yes, for the first night, it's a great job. But the second night has to have more. If not, then we're not really living, because every living thing must grow. May God help that each and every one of us actualize the light within our soul, of the very soul, the essence of who we are, to illuminate this world, to enhance the lives of others, to fulfill our common purpose in creation, and see a world that is filled with light, filled with love, filled with inspiration, and in a way that eliminates and illuminates the darkness, and it may be speedily in our days. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Harrison. And as you know, there's many synagogues, temples represented here, so there will be more speeches. We're going to go first to a special... That's right. The lot and the latkes are on the hot plate, so we're, we're, we're in good shape. But we have a very special treat for you now as an introduction to the lighting of the menorah. Well, I shouldn't say as an introduction, as a main feature of the program. We have the children of Beth Am are going to sing a couple of Hanukkah numbers for us. So as they come forward, let's give them a round of applause. tonight. You're going to hear Hebrew for the first verse, but don't worry, they'll sing it again for you in English so you know what they're saying. <laughs>
ago, we were all together for Torah study. It was a Shabbat morning. It was a wonderful morning. We were studying the portion. All cell phones are generally off, and then suddenly a message appeared, and we heard the sad news. And I think everybody knows what I'm talking about that happened just a month ago on a Shabbat morning. The world was devastated. We were mortified. A group of us got together, thanks to Rabbi Rudin, the next day and put together a wonderful and meaningful vigil. But we were so taken back. And yeah, I'm short, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> but in our tears, and it almost reflects the Hanukkah story, we were so embraced by the greater community. I am so heartened to see the Iman here tonight. Well, I look forward to meeting the, the pastors who are here. The Jewish community was so embraced, the mayor, the amount of people, athletes from around the world, the Muslim community, the Christian community, who raised money for the, for the Tree of Life synagogue. We are not alone, just as Mayor Soriano said, we are part of a greater world, we are part of a greater community. And that's what makes us great our fellowship with other people, our relations with other people, to be able to share Hanukkah, to be able to share Christmas, to be able to share Kwanzaa, to be able to share Ramadan with other people, to be able to be part of a whole, to bring our unique candles and blend our candles together and be one family. This is what God wants from us. So I thank the larger community for so embracing us, and I thank all of you for being here tonight. God bless you. Hagarim Sameach, happy Hanukkah. It's so nice to be here. Um, tonight is the first night of Hanukkah, but I didn't want to talk about the first night. I wanted to talk about something that happens later on this week. Hanukkah is our only holiday that spans two months. We begin tonight on the 25th of Kislev, and then this weekend we celebrate Rosh Chodesh Tevet. It is a tradition in North African countries on the seventh night of Hanukkah to celebrate Chag Habanot, the festival of the daughters. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. It is an opportunity for the women to celebrate their daughters, to recognize them, to bring them into the shul, and to study Torah, um, to pass along heirloom gifts to them. In the words of Abigail Adams, I wanted to make sure that we remember the ladies. So I invite you this week to tell the stories of Judith, to tell the story of Hannah, to remember the women who make Hanukkah such a special holiday for us as well. And um, as you do that, to make sure that we embrace the courage and the strength of these women who were able to carry forth their Jewishness and to carry forth their heritage. And may the warmth and the light of their stories bring warmth and light to us as well. Yeah. Now, I'd like to call upon Rabbi Shalom Lubin, Congregation Avis Torah. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. So wonderful to be here. I'm standing between you and the donuts and latkes. <laughs> I want to share one very quick thought with you when indeed so much has been said about the message of hope, the message of togetherness, the message of looking forward to brighter tomorrow. That Shabbos morning that uh, the story in Pittsburgh took place, I was actually in Israel. And the night before, Thursday night, I spent the night with my wife and one-year-old on the Gaza border at a kibbutz that had experienced devastating fires over the past year from balloons that had been sent over and burned their orchards and fields down and almost every night they experienced rockets uh, hitting their hitting their fields, hitting their areas and um, I was sitting out there, it was 10 o'clock at night, it was beautiful and I turned to a gentleman who lives there, who grew up on this kibbutz, has been around since the 40s and I said, how is it living over here? You know, it's a beautiful kibbutz, it's a beautiful area, but you've got rockets coming at you, it must be tough. So he looked at me and said some words I'll always remember. He said, you know, Rabbi, living over here is 99% heaven. 1% we have a problem. And I was like, that's a perspective. That's an attitude to have. Because the truth is, 
We all have our challenges, we all have our obstacles as individuals, as families, as communities, as a people, as a greater society today. But let's never forget that 99% of our life is really wonderful. And there's so much hope that we have in the togetherness that we share that really binds us together and gives us the courage to make us realize that 2,000 years ago things were bleak and things were rough and the Maccabees came along and thousands of years later we're still here. So let's never lose perspective of the fact that 99% of our lives are really wonderful and that 1% we hope and pray turns to make it 100% wonderful. But in the meantime, let's never lose focus of the courage we have, of the brightness of the world, of the hope we have for a brighter and better tomorrow. Thank you and happy Sunday. So thank you everyone for coming. We're gonna, in a few minutes, we're gonna go out, but you have to first earn the latkes. And so you have to join in the singing and the clapping and dancing that's gonna happen now. Um, when you go outside, there's fresh, uh, fresh donuts, there's hot potato latkes, there's also chocolate coin, chocolate coins. But we're also gonna be giving out Hanukkah gelt. Everyone's gonna get three dimes. The first time is for you to keep for yourself, the, you know, don't spend it all at once. The second one is to exchange with another person to give them Hanukkah gelt, sharing the holiday. And the third coin is to give to charity. There will be a charity box on the table. Those that want to do the mitzvah right away, otherwise you give it to a charity of your choice. And this is one of the way, another one of the ways that we celebrate Hanukkah. Everyone here saw the lighting of the menorah, but we don't fulfill our mitzvah with that. One still has to light the menorah at home. If anyone needs a menorah kit, whether it's a menorah or candles or a how-to guide, we have them outside next to the latkes. Let me know, and it will be a pleasure to give it to you. So thank you for joining us, and a happy Hanukkah, and let's take it away in the music. Oh, 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 oh